What's up, YouTube? Capital G here talking pot of desires in this video and asking the question, is this a dead card walking metaphorically? Is this a card that is about to work itself out of the meta and a card that's probably just going to see a steep decline in popularity and obviously in value, a card that you're probably going to want to get rid of and you're not really going to have to worry about picking up if you're one of those budget players that's just like, I can just never afford to get a place out of this card. Because keep in mind, at one point, pot of desires was about a $90 card, so you were looking at spending upwards of $250 just to get a play set. And in all honesty, this is probably the single most divisive card I have ever come across in all of my time playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I cannot remember another card where people's opinions on it were so incredibly split, where you've got some people on the left that are just like, this card is amazing. It's the bee's knees. Like, how could you not like a draw two? It doesn't matter how many cards you got to get rid of. They're irrelevant. You might not see them anyway. Get your two cards, set your board up, and just win and then you've got other people that are just like no way jose sometimes you banish the wrong things and you can't win it can mess up your plays just you know play other draw cards and you know i've been on both sides of the fence but i guess i'm kind of in the middle like i i won't run into my dark magician because i acknowledge it's easily one of the best cards that konami printed all last year one of the most powerful cards in the entire game but I tested it and there were certain times where you'd banish like the one copy evolution magic or you banish both of your dark magician, excuse me, two of your three dark magicians. And it's like, I, I can't fucking win with one dark magician and dark magicians. Like, how am I supposed to go in to my rank sevens? It's just way too difficult. And you guys know with Raging Tempest right around the corner, I think we're about three weeks out from Raging Tempest being legal at like premier events, uh, YCSs and the regional circuits. It is going to drastically change the meta. And you guys pretty much know what I'm getting at, but it's not just Zoom duty at beast like people don't understand that between raging tempest and fusion enforcers which are basically coming out within you know a couple of weeks of each other we're going to have three tier one decks i'm going to count infernoids as kind of like a new deck because people kind of play them now but just getting like you know the the new trap card that they're going to be getting plus getting lawn mowing next door it, it almost becomes like a brand new deck obviously we have zooty at beast and then we have the win which i don't know artifact and if you guys have been looking at the ocg and paying attention like no one runs Pot of Desires. The card has basically evaporated. In fact, you guys know if you go on YG Organization, when they list all the tournament decks, you know, they show copies of cards. Pot of Desires is nowhere near the top 10. I don't even think it's in like the top 15 or top 20. And a lot of that is just the way that they play in the OCG because of the, the best decks over there. It's just different. Right now in the TCG, like Yu-Gi-Oh! is all about making these huge colossal boards, setting up turn one and trying to stun your opponent. And, you know, you don't really care about the content of your deck at that point. When you can make ABC Buster Dragon plus like anti-spell fragrance against Metaphos and like, all right, you can't basically win or you have a big ddd field of siegfried and crystal wing and titanic galaxy with like a vanities and your opponent can't really do much about that but pendulum domination is really only going to be able to shine for just a couple of weeks and when these new decks come in like you know uh zodiac beast and win which i don't artifacts like these are not decks that are playing pot of desires and the thing is even if the TCG doesn't follow suit of the OCG, right? Let's just say that the TCG, uh, you know, Zodiac Beasts are not tier zero. Let's just say that they become the best deck, but they don't completely overwhelm. That'll still be three tier one decks infused into the meta that don't run, you know, Pot of Desires. Like, you, I really just don't think you can run Desires in a deck like um, Zodiac Beast because, like, what if you have Terra Top and then you activate Desires and you banish your Take Timberg and your, your Terra Top is kind of useless at that point? You know, what if you banish two copies of your mobile rat like you're well, r.i.p to your combos you're just not gonna be doing anything you know if you look at a deck like win which i don't know artifacts i mean do you really want to risk potentially banishing your sites like you banish two sites and you know maybe you draw one and it's like wow all three of my sanctums are completely dead so that's pretty nice you know what i mean i think glass bell is the one that you special summon when you have two wind monsters on the field that's a one of if that card gets banished you can't make crystal wing for the entire game you know what i mean so that, that's one of the deck's best opening plays and you just have eliminated it so you know guys i'm wondering about pot of desires and 
I think that this is a card that honestly, it's kind of crazy because this is a card that, you know, a few months ago was almost a hundred dollars, but I really think that this card is going to potentially work itself out of the meta. Like I could honestly see this card dropping to like maybe 25 or $30, like definitely under 50, because you're just going to have so much of the raging tempest decks and the fusion enforcer decks that just don't run it. If fluffles take off too, that'll just be another deck. Like fluffles have so much searchability do uh fr do uh what's it called um toy vendor and the drawing there and the popping and the searching through fluffle um dog fluffle bear get you cards um the card i can't think of uh fright for patchwork or is it fright for or fluffle fright for patchwork yeah that's the card like there's so much searching and consistency inherently in fluffles like they would never even think about running a pop uh, a card like desires that might banish a couple of copies of their poly and then you know they can't fuse so you guys let me know what you think um pot of desires is definitely still an amazing card i just don't think it's going to be that much of the meta and if you look at these future ocg decks guys that are coming out of these new sets like none of them run it so i could be wrong about this but this is just something that i wanted to get other people's opinions on like what do you guys think and do you think that the value of pot of desires is drastically going to drop and i think that's you know probably a good thing for people who have not been able to afford this card i mean it's been out for a while i think it came out in august if i'm not mistaken so the card's been out almost six months you know what i mean like budget players should be able to get the card at at this point so you guys let me know what you think leave that in the comment section below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already